Greetings, Eric Packer, the naturopath from New Zealand. Thanks for coming back. We're going to do a series on autoimmune disease. I've had quite a few people asking me, you know, this particular condition now for some time. So, and um, I'd like to talk about it. It's an area I've got a big interest in. As you're aware, I've just retired from my clinical practice after 30 plus years. I've seen a lots of different case presentations of autoimmune disease. So I've got a pretty good understanding of autoimmune disease, what it entails, what I believe the causes are, you know, and the effects and also different treatments and things like that will go into that. But first, what the heck is autoimmune disease? You've probably heard of, heard of that word before. Autoimmune, what does it mean? I mean, it sounds really puzzling, doesn't it? Well, if you look at your immune system, it's basically designed to keep you alive. It stops really the onslaught of things like viruses, you know, various pathogens, bacteria, yeasts, you know, fungi, different things from penetrating into the body and creating a problem. So the immune system sets up that response. There are two sides to the immune system, or two parts. You've got the front end and the back end. I may have explained this in a previous uh, video. There's a cell mediated response or the front end of the immune system. So we would really call this the uh, the Marines or the hand-to-hand -hand combat. And then we've got the guys up the back, the humoral, humoral response, H-U-M, I think H-U-M-O-R-A-L, humoral response. And that's the back end. These are white blood cells that are specialized. So this is not hand-to-hand -hand combat. These guys up the back can't really see the enemy they're fighting. So they've created specialized chemicals and subsets of cells to help them. Now, these are lymphocytes, B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes. So the front end are the neutrophils. So these basically attack bacteria head on, a bit like the Marines can actually see the, you know, the enemy they're fighting. So that's the neutrophil hand to hand combat. But when that gets breached, of course, enemy go through, the humoral response have to pick up at the back end. So if we look at the humoral response and a specialty kind of troops, you know, if you look at a war, you've got, you know, guys in planes dropping bombs on people. You've got people shooting bombs at people that can't see them, the rocket launches and stuff like that. So that's the humoral response, okay? So it's a complicated system, front end, back end, but it works not unlike an army, how an army, how the Marines would work, I, I guess, and the, uh, and, you know, the Air Force and the army would work together. So, but that system can go astray, horribly astray. Now you know in wars you can also create something called collateral damage where you know you're shooting what you think is the enemy but in fact you're dropping bombs on your own guys. And that's a little bit like autoimmunity. Autoimmunity is when the immune system actually starts turning on itself. Okay, so antibodies are created that start attacking or causing problems with specific parts of your body. There's about, I think, 75 or close to 80 known autoimmune diseases. Most are quite rare, you'll probably never ever hear in your life. There's probably about 15 or 20 of them I know reasonably well. However, what they believe, experts believe there's another 30 or 40 that could be added to that category. So we could be looking at over 100 different types of autoimmune diseases. And they're categorized into two major groups. You've got localized autoimmune disease and systemic. Localized, for example, being rheumatoid arthritis, where it's gonna affect the joints, you know, the small joints predominantly. Um, and also if we look at psoriasis, an autoimmune condition that affects the skin, that makes the skin's cells shed too fast. So you're gonna get this high proliferation of epidermis of skin cells building up and you get all this flakiness around the head and things like that. Um, others can be more systemic like systemic lupus erythematosus or SLE or lupus, right? So that can affect like you know, many different parts of the body, the skin, the kidneys, <coughs> the heart can be affected. And often these things are quite vague to pick up. Autoimmune diseases, in many cases, don't get picked up for years. Women tend to have more of a problem with autoimmunity than men do. In fact, it's like two to one or even three to one in some cases. So women can be more prone, particularly between the ages of 15 to about 45 or the fertility years, they seem to be you know, affected. Often conditions will start early on and build up and then the woman will be diagnosed often several years later, which I find pretty poor, but it happens in many cases. I've diagnosed several cases of autoimmune disease myself in my practice when the doctor had no idea what was going on with this patient. And, you know, with all due credit to the medical doctor, the patient may have approached uh, him or her in the early days when the symptoms were rather vague. But 
it surprises me how many doctors even get psoriasis and dermatitis mixed up you know conditions like that so anyone can make mistakes so autoimmunity is when the immune system attacks your own body right and we're going to talk in this series we've got a whole lot of stuff here to talk about in fact who gets autoimmune disease why do some people get it why does it attack the body 14 common autoimmune diseases causes symptoms we're going to go over a whole lot of stuff so if you've got an autoimmune condition or you have a loved one or friend or relative you know somebody you care about or anybody uh, that has autoimmune disease i'd encourage you to have a look at the entire series to start from the first video and work your right way through or you can watch it in any particular order but you'll learn lots of little things that you probably would not have heard anywhere else regarding autoimmunity now why would that be so is it because I know different information? Well, not really. I mean, I've worked with patients now for, you know, over half my life. So I've worked with lots and lots of different people, thousands of people. So you build up a, a sort of a knowledge bank over a period of time, particularly conditions like rheumatoid arthritis and ulcerative colitis, Hashimoto's thyroiditis. These are conditions I'm very familiar with. So I'll certainly be speaking a lot more about these conditions. So do hang around if you've got autoimmunity. Even if you haven't, you're going to get a lot out of the series. Thanks for tuning in. If you want my free report, just click on the link below in the description box. And thanks for tuning in and subscribing as always. Thank you.